If you just got a Sony ECM-B1M and you're a little bit overwhelmed by all the switches and knobs on the back of this thing, then you're in the right place because in this video we're going to talk about all the features that this mic has and exactly how you should set it up with your Sony camera. We're going to break down what every single switch and knob does, so let's get right into it. First and foremost, when you get the mic, you're going to notice that there's this shoe cover on it. Just take the shoe cover off. Keep this somewhere though because this is going to allow you to protect the pins on the microphone whenever you're not using it. And you want to be really careful because all these pins sends electrical information into your camera that sends the sound and also powers the mic. So to use the mic, all you have to do is just insert it onto the hot shoe of your camera. Make sure that the ring on top is loose and then tighten it down so it's a nice snug fit. Then on the top of it, you're actually going to see the first switch we're going to talk about is this digital or analog switch. So if you're using the mic on an older camera like the a7 III and you have it set to digital, you might get this message that says this accessory is not supported. So to fix that, all you have to do is take the digital analog switch, flip it down to analog, and then it'll work just fine. If you're using one of the newer cameras though, I would leave the switch set to digital because that's going to give you a cleaner signal and take out one conversion on going from the microphone into the camera. The next switch has the three circles beside it. That's our pickup pattern switch. That just changes the way that the microphone interacts with sounds and then it changes which of the different capsules on the top of the microphone are actually active. So the three pickup patterns are super directional, unidirectional, and omnidirectional. The top one is super directional and that's going to give you the most narrow field of view possible and it's going to be great for when you're right in front of the camera. That's going to be great when you want to block out most of the noise from the sides and all the noise from the back. It's gonna do a great job rejecting all that background noise. The next setting is unidirectional. And this is still gonna be a tighter pickup pattern than the omnidirectional pickup pattern, but it is gonna allow a little bit more of that side noise in. You're gonna see that it still really rejects noise from the back of the microphone. Finally, the last switch is omnidirectional. And that's gonna give you all of the mic capsules active and it's also gonna allow you to be behind the microphone and to still have your voice picked up from it. The biggest problem with the omnidirectional though is it's just gonna allow for a lot more sound to come in and it's gonna be a lot less focused sounding so you're gonna notice more background noise and reflections from your room. This is a test of the mic set to super directional. I've got it about an arm's length away from me. So if we start to spin it, we do hear that the total amount of my voice goes down a lot and we start to reject the sound, especially when it's pointed away from me. So then whenever we spin it and point it back towards me, you do start to hear my voice stronger again. Now this is a test with the microphone set to unidirectional. So you hear, even when we turn it a little bit, you still get more of my voice in, but when we turn it around, it does start to reject my voice quite a bit more. This is with the microphone pointed away from me. Now the side of the microphone and now pointed towards me again. Finally, we have omnidirectional. So there we're getting a lot of room noise, but we're able to hear my voice pretty much the same level, regardless of what direction we have the camera pointed at me. So my advice is use super directional if possible because that's going to give you the narrowest pickup pattern that's going to give you the strongest signal with the least amount of reflections. The next switch we find is the filter switch. Your options are NC, LC, and OFF. NC stands for noise cancellation, and that just uses some of Sony's magic to take some background noise off. The next switch is LC, which is really great if you're in a vehicle, if you've got air conditioner noise or other low rumble. You can effectively minimize it just by turning that switch to LC. The biggest problem with using the LC and the NC switches is that bakes that sound straight into the camera file that you're recording. And so if you go in post to add low in, or if you want to do different noise reduction, you've already got some of those artifacts and effects applied. So your sound is just going to be less complete because it's missing that low in. I also find that if I'm talking straight to the camera, it does make my voice sound a little bit unnatural to have the LC switch on. So I tend to leave the switch set to off and apply any background noise removal in post. This is one extra step though. So if you're running and gunning and you need quick turnaround, you can set it to LC to minimize some of that handling noise and also to minimize the low end rumble. This is a test with the microphone set to super directional and the noise filter set to off. This is a test with the microphone set to super directional and we have the filter set to NC or noise canceling. So here you can listen to the difference of the sound now that we have the microphone set to NC or noise canceling. Finally, we have the microphone set to LC or low cut. So here you can probably tell that my voice sounds a little bit different. It doesn't sound quite as full and deep as it did before we set that switch to off. The next switch is ATT or attenuation. And the attenuation switch actually is backwards from what you would think. 
So if it's set to zero, that's actually stock, and then 10 is minus 10, and 20 is minus 20. Basically what attenuation is, is it allows loud sounds to still come into the microphone without it distorting. So if you're at a loud concert or there's a ton of loud noise coming into the microphone and you're clipping on your camera's meters, that means that the signal is turning red. You need to set that to minus 10 or minus 20 as a way to pad down the signal, keep your audio from clipping. So my recommendation with this switch is I keep it set to zero whenever possible, just because that allows for the most sound possible to enter the microphone. But if you're having issues with clipping or loud noises, or you think that the volume could get kind of loud, then set it to minus 10 or minus 20 and do your best to monitor the audio either using headphones in your camera, or you can also just watch the meters on the screen and make sure they never touch red. And if they're even getting close to red, you might need to pad the signal down a little bit. Next, we have the audio level switch and knob. And what these allow you to do is to control the amount of gain that the microphone actually has. So if it's set to auto, the knob is not gonna do anything. The microphone and camera are gonna decide on what the different levels should be set to. If you have it set to manual though, you're able to manually turn this knob and change the volume that's going into the microphone. I recommend always having the switch set to manual because if you have it set to auto, then the camera's gonna make adjustments for you and then your final file, the audio levels are gonna be all over the place because any quiet parts are gonna be boosted and any louder parts are gonna be ducked down. So it's gonna be really hard to apply effects and level it out. To me, it's just easier to add a compressor on Final Cut Pro or to adjust my volume level manually in post to make sure I get a strong signal across the board on my video files. Finally, we have the audio level knob. So once you've applied all of your different attenuation and your filtration, that's when you wanna set your levels. You wanna watch them on the camera monitor and you also wanna use headphones if possible to make sure nothing is clipping. My recommendation is I typically start with it just below five when I'm doing spoken word in front of the camera, but you use your best judgment to make sure you're getting a strong signal without any clipping. So I would always have the levels a little bit quieter than I think I need because you never want the levels to clip because once it clips, you're not able to fix it in post. It's just always gonna sound distorted. So that's what all the different switches do. Next, we do see that there is a little USB port on the side. That's used for firmware updates. I don't know if there's ever even been a firmware update for this microphone though. On top of the microphone, we see the different capsules and that pickup selector switch just chooses which of these is actually active and which are shut off. With the mic, you also get this windscreen. I typically leave the windscreen on even though it does cut the overall input level down a little bit and it does add a little bit of muffling to the sound. To me, it's worth it because it helps level out plosives a little bit and it does cut down on wind noise too. So to use the wind sock, it's basically like putting a sock on your foot. You pull it over the mic and pull the heel down there and then you have your windscreen on. Here's a sound test with the mic set to super directional and no filter and we have the windscreen on. Here's a sound test with the microphone set to super directional, the noise filter is turned off, and now we have the windscreen off as well. Another feature to note, this does have a built-in shock mount, but it doesn't work very well. So if you're doing a lot of handheld footage with this mic, I would personally recommend turning the LC switch on because LC is gonna cut down on a lot of that shake of the microphone itself. So that's my explanation of all the different switches and features of the Sony ECM B1M microphone. I hope this video has helped you become a little bit more confident in using it and knowing what all the different switches do. If you have any other questions or need more help with this microphone, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. If you wanna buy an ECM B1M, I do have links to buy it in the description below.